We are live. Yes. We're here, live. From the Tupadillon studio. Look, I know I'm hard to hear, but I'm just trying to be dramatic here. Whoa, here we go. What's going on, folks? Welcome to the show. Good evening. I dropped a bomb on you. of Earth, people of the internet, this is the Tuba Dylan live show. Welcome, welcome. Tonight I'm going to oil at least one tuba. One tuba will be oiled. Perhaps two. How exciting. This, the Mirafone Bruckner five quarter double C rotary tuba. My first choice for rehearsal tomorrow night. Checking all systems. Hello, I'm gonna check the chat. Hello, Jeffrey Young. Right now I still have the headphones on right here in Echo. Which makes me feel really weird. It's hard to concentrate on what I'm trying to say. Hopefully you can hear me okay. There's music in the background. I could always turn that down say something in the chat. Hello. People of the internet, you have reached the Tuba Dylan show. Ask me anything about tubas or life. Or anything. Ask me about the new iPhone 14 Pro. The always on display. works. What's going on, folks? <clears throat> well, if you have a horn and you're not doing anything and it needs a little maintenance, and if you have a horn, it always needs a little maintenance, go get that and oil your instrument with me. Show it some love. We're probably playing tomorrow, right? I will be. So I'm going to do it. But first, I'm going to switch headphones so I stop hearing myself in crazy echo. 
Okay. Let's try this one. It's tangled up by my wrap microphone. Okay. Let's see here. I'm not hearing anything in these headphones yet. Hello. Oh yeah, because I can't hear this microphone anyway. Here, help me out here, my friend, Jeffrey Young. Tell me what microphone you like better. This, or I can turn this microphone off. If I engage these. One, two, this will be a different kind of mix. One, two, I'll turn that up higher. One, two, three. Can you hear me through that? Or is it really low, my voice? Or is it okay? Those can be turned up some here. I wonder how that sounds, or is there too much phasing? Maybe I should just use one of those mics. Like that one right there. How's that sound? Does that sound okay? Yes, but low. Like, that's what I suspect, that it's low. It's a zero on here. It's a little bit low going out over here. So I wonder how that is coming through. Like, why is it doing that? Is it super high over here? Does it look high over there? No. One, two. Oh, I see. Okay. So now I'm starting to figure some things out. This should bring it up louder, but there's going to be more noise. But yeah, here we go. Now it should be louder. How's that? I wonder how that is. Now, I'm going to have to adjust this if I play a tuba through this setup. Is that, that's louder, I bet. But it maybe sounds kind of tinny. Try this one. That one's a little bit more bassy, a little bit less tinny. This one, though, will pick up a wider range, at least the way I'm looking right here. You can probably hear me okay. Much better. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Excellent. This is always the work in progress, this place. It doesn't ever do what I'd like it to do, but it comes close enough that it once in a while I come back to work it oh that's the best right here is pretty good I hear a little bit of some sort of echo what if I what if I put both microphones tell me if this does phases you know what phasing is now I have two two microphones that are like high and low most likely they're phasing, meaning that the sound's getting to one a little tiny bit slower than the other one. So I wonder if that will phase or if that actually might just sound cool and pick up even more sound. And out there in internet land, I don't know how that's going to sound. But we'll go with that for now. I'm going to go with this one. Eliminate the, eliminate the phase, the phase. Eliminate the phase. If I, if I look up at this microphone, which is up here, if I looked up at you, I'd still be speaking sort of towards it, at least on this camera. Probably not in focus if I looked up like that. That's okay though. All right, so I want to get this horn out. It's right here. And just do some basic you turn this one on too. Okay. How's that? And do some basic maintenance here. Did I hear something when I picked it up? Like there's something inside it? It's possible. There's something jingling on it. Hear that? 
That's interesting. I have children. They could put stuff in it. Just like the kids. I wonder what that is. Right from the start, we have tuba drama. Tuba drama here on the Tuba Dylan Show. Not as much depth. With both microphones like this, but they're not phasing too much, right? Like it's not going. Who knows? Who knows? Um, right now, I'm concerned because there's something in this horn, I think, or hanging from it. it sounds like it's inside. I'm gonna turn, keep, keep turning it this way. Let's see what happens this way. If I hear it. I didn't hear it that way. It almost might have stopped. This horn does need some basic TLC, that's for sure. Well, how was your week? Do you recommend lapping slides? Yeah, I lapped two slides on this horn. Uh, and, or did I, or did I, yeah, I did. The first valve slide, which it turns out that I, this horn plays so well in tune that unless I'm holding out a D on the bass clef staff for a period of time, like a stick out note, I won't even touch that one. But I did lap that one to make it quicker. And the fourth valve slide, I actually use because every time I play a D or D flat below the staff, I adjust that, but it's it's you know usually a little bit out, quite a bit out on this on this horn. So I lap those slides. If a if a slide's hard to pull in and out, then do whatever it takes if you need to do that. If you need to trombonize your tuba slides, you you can do that. Uh, I had a horn, my first C tuba that had two jiggers that moved the slides up and down. And those slides had to be perfectly slick like a trombone slide. So, so I'm opening the back of the, the uh, valve caps here. Um, let's see here, that's the back angle. Let me find a, see if my close-up looks any good when I have a tube here. Actually have a close-up shot here to that to see if it you know, see how much you can see from that boop, boop. close up check it out so, see if it'll focus on there maybe maybe not there it does look at that the mirophone rotary valve cap back there's the other side of it Oh, how gorgeous, huh? Uh, it looks like it still has oil on it and it doesn't look dirty, so that's a good sign. But I'm still going to put two or three drops on each one. What's the best way to do it? I mean like to lap your slides? Take it to someone who absolutely knows they can do it right and not screw up your horn. That's the best way to do it. If you're just talking about oiling rotary valves, uh, what I'm doing right now is the best way to do it. And that's, I can tell you that for sure because that's the way I do it. So it's gotta be the best way because I do everything the best I can. Is that music annoying or is it, it's, I don't think it's too, too loud, especially with all the clanky clankiness of the, of the valves. Like a... I 
But the best way to lap slides or valves. Yeah, were you talking about slides or valves? Probably didn't pay enough attention. Oh yeah, slides. Okay, I, I that that is how I'm gonna answer it. Uh, some people will even lap their valves, which is just almost crazy. But um, I've heard of that. I've never done that. To piss the valves. But I know people have done it because their valves wouldn't move right or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, pl I'm playing tomorrow night in my concert band, like for the first time in several months. And uh, I've got to figure out what C2 but I want to bring. Uh, I almost always play on this one. But I played an outdoor concert on my Eastman. I don't know why, I just felt like playing something different. It went, it went really well. But this is my go-to. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. I lost one. Okay, I have to go down and get that one. I'm going to do the first one for it now, just in case I drop it. Then I'll only have to pick, bend down once if I drop two. So I'm going to do this one, and <laughs> then I want to go get it. But yeah, I dropped one. But the best way to do anything is the, if, if you can figure out how to do it, that's great. I take such good care of my instruments that I have very little need for professional care and maintenance. So, in that respect, I think I've done things well, if that makes sense. I'm enjoying this sneaky sneaky track that's playing there. Bum, 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 bum. I don't know how much you can hear that, but I can hear it pretty well. Let's see here. I think I that thing go. It's hard to see around my fat belly. Oh, here we go. Got it. So why would you want to lap your slides? Probably just to be able to tune better when playing. And you don't really, I don't really think you tune when you're messing around with slides. You're just kind of, just kind of putting the slide in the right place for it to play that center, that particular note. Well, I guess it's tuning. It's probably tuning. Don't pay attention to anything that I tell you. There we go. So I got the back caps. And yeah, it feels a little slicker. Definitely needs some oil here. Feels feels like the Tin Man for one of my horns because I haven't actually played this one in several months. And this one happens to be uh, one of my favorites. It'd probably be my go-to for a recording gig for a contrabass tuba at this point. I think it would be my go-to. just because of the intonation and the ease, the, uh, how easy it is to play. And uh, I'm gonna flip that around, not getting that in quite the way I want. You can see that better if I do it that way though. Anyways. Yeah, this horn just has so much going for it uh, and I'm, I'm actually surprised they didn't sell more of these. Um, but it does take a lot of air, so I'll give it, like, there's always that. It, it takes a takes a big lung capacity, which I have, and I have in spades. I'm a big man, usually bigger than most all people that I'm near, 98% of the world probably. Maybe 99. 98% of men. Is that why we end up playing the tuba? Why we're attracted to the tuba? Does the tuba attract us? Us big people? Now, not all big people are people who play the tuba. Not all people who play the tuba are big people. But there are many 
be big people who end up playing the tuba for whatever reason. Um, and some of them have been some of the greats of the tuba, like the most honorable and famous tuba players that have ever walked the earth. Many have been large, tall, you know, you know strikingly handsome men. It's just in case my wife is watching, maybe she'll remember that. All right. So what I did just now, I should have been talking about that, but uh, <clears throat> I put a sort of medium heavy oil on the back caps and at the top between the rotors on this side here. And then I put a thicker oil on all of the ball connectors and on the springs, sort of on the moving parts. Just a little drop here and there. And uh, that really kind of makes it happy, frees it up. And then once in a while, with a rotary instrument, I'll pour just regular valve oil through the valve set, which I'm going to do right now. Now I have no viewers, how excited. Oh wow, look at that go. There was stuff in here. I'm going to put goo on my slides next. Goo on the slides. I'm going to change the mood of the music here. It's just been this sort of light classical piano this whole time. and I think it's just time to, to, to switch it up a little bit. Let's find something else. I do have... I'm kind of hearing a little bit of an echo here. I wonder where it's coming from. One, two, one, two. One, two. Probably from those other headphones down there. Turn that off. Always trying to improve. Banging things around here. Welcome to the Tuba Dylan Show. Moving over here to maybe some, uh, well, we're we almost, by mistake, clicked on acid jazz, but let's go for that. I don't know if I like the vocals there. What is this? Okay. It doesn't really sound like acid jazz to me. Huh. Let's try this one. I love it. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I'm going back to the regular jazz. What about this one? I'll try that. Just because it's nighttime. I feel like being laid back. At some point, I'm going to play one of these tubes, whether someone's watching or not. You know? Welcome, if you're just tuning in, say hello in the chat. I'm here. Uh, so is the dog. We've got, we've got rare, rare dog movement. Rare dog movement. I'm going to switch to the cam if I can in time. I'm going to the camera. Boom, boom. There she goes. Oh, brutal. Oh, oh. Good dog, there we go. Oh yeah, she's like curling up, curling up, that's about it. We'll click out of that. I kinda like this track, you know. I'm gonna start putting goop on these slides while I sit here and talk to no one. And uh, if you wanna ask me a question in the chat, I'll be here. I'll be here for you. Let's see here. 
tuning slide that's pretty important for a goop. Go to this camera, it's better. This is a better camera for the purposes of putting goop on your slides. I'm showing, you know, more stuff. Welcome to my show. This is my stream. I'm here to talk about tubas or anything you would like. And uh, no commitments, no commitments. Just say hi in the chat. Watch the goo flow onto the slides. That's all that's going on tonight. But I'm here if you need me. Ooh, what did that do? Nothing. That's probably good. I hit a button and it didn't do anything. I think those buttons could have sound effects on them. Huh. Okay. These things are mysterious. These things called tubas, brass instruments. How they work. They make incredible sounds. Uh, you look at all the engineering that's gone on throughout history that brings us light and energy and grandiose architecture and then even the same for the instruments of the world as they have progressed over the years and the factories that make them have been tried and tested and some of them have survived through disasters and war and recession and they make these just, I mean, beautiful instruments. I'm, I'm mesmerized by the incredible musical instrument collection that I'm blessed to own here. And the quality of the design, from the design to the, to the maker and how obvious, meticulous they had to be with their machinery and, you know, just sort of the perfection of the bends and twists of the brass. It's just incredible. Am I talking to anybody? I'm not. That's okay. That's a really long second valve slide that Mirafone makes for this thing. And I just pull it out a little tiny bit when I play. Uh, but yeah, they make, make a really long one. <laughs> for whatever reason. And a not so long first valve slide, which frankly, do I think it'd be better if it was a little longer, but I think they just, the way this one's designed, they just can't fit one end that has a lot more slack on it. Which is okay. Because this horn plays so well in tune that you kind of don't have to mess with your slides too much. Let me give this one a try. Now, I have so many good mouthpieces that I like that I play with these double C tubas. Uh, but that's, that's always kind of a, a fussy issue, probably for most brass players. I know it is for trumpet players. It's an incredibly big deal. Uh, and probably, you know, I guess for, for all brass players, it's kind of a big deal trying to find the right mouthpiece to go with whatever specific horn they're playing. Because my C-tubas are all very different from each other. They're all very different. If you're watching this after the fact or whatever, don't forget to give me the like. Tell the YouTube algorithm, or comment on these videos and say, this tuba Dylan guy, he is so fascinating. He just he sits there and oils his valves and he cuts to all these different angles on his in his studio. And nobody knows why he has it set up that way because he only has one person watching him. And he talks about himself in the third person. A wackadoodle. Yes, I am a bit of a wackadoodle. Oh, and the other reason I love this one is that 
it's like low maintenance while you're playing. You don't have to spin it around and search for water and spit. It just does its job. It's kind of light. You know? My York Brunner is surprisingly light for its huge size, but it's not light. I love that thing. I kind of have always wanted to bring that one and just play that one in my community band, but, but man, that's just this kind of like overkill. Overkill for community band. Like a six quarter tuba. There's so many people have these six quarter tubas these days, you know? that they've, you know, there are probably a lot of people that play those things in their community bands. They're more affordable and, I don't know, Americans live in a land of incredible abundance and so many people can have these kind of instruments, you know. Uh, really, I guess it's still really hard to afford a nice tuba, but man, when I was a kid, that was, it was hard to find them, even if you could afford them. There weren't like a lot of dealers and stuff, you know, yeah. But if you wanted to use the one, there wasn't any internet or anything like that. It's like word of mouth. Oh, you know this one guy in this one symphony, or you know, you know a few people in LA and you just tell your friends or your teachers, look, if you're talking to anybody, find out if somebody has a good C2, but they're happy to get rid of to like a college student for a couple grand or whatever. I mean, these days, you might as well just get a brand new Chinese one and you're getting almost all the way there for a good tuba. Now I'm going to pour some of this uh, Ultra Pure Professional Valve Oil for Pistons or Rotors down the entire valve block and move the valves around and kind of just let it fall around. Go in between them. It really does it too. You can kind of even feel it when the valves are a little tight. But it just goes in there, goes through it, kind of gets some of the dirt off of it. And it'll come back out the bottom. I usually put some, since I haven't played, played in a while, I'll put some down the lead pipe on this one too. Any, any new questions? No, we have two viewers, two viewers. We've doubled our viewership tonight. Well, we welcome, I welcome you, my two viewers. Just wanted to make sure that you know how appreciative I am of the two viewership mark. It's been a while since the last time we had two viewers. Last time we were on the air, we had two viewers. I'm excited about that. And just hit me up in the chat. Ask me anything. Or tell me that I suck. Whatever. I don't care. I do care, really. I mean, if you said I sucked, I would probably be like, oh, man, this guy sucks. I don't care what you have to say. Why do you have to pick on me? It's just a tuba show. Why do you, why do you have to be so judgmental? I, I haven't played these excerpts in 30 years. I, I just am trying out a mouthpiece. Why? 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 Now everyone's tuning in. Welcome to the Tuba Dylan Late Night Talk Show, where we oil our tubas. That's what we're doing tonight, at least. Pull out your tuba, pull out your trumpet, your trombone, whatever you happen to have on hand, and uh, uh, get out that oil, get out that grease, and start fixing that thing up. Yeah, I want to start messing around here. Ooh, look at that. I'm blocking the sound. I can tell. I'm blocking the sound from getting there. All right. I need to turn off the background music, at least for now. As much as I like that for me, to keep me calm. 
my greasy fingers are gonna be touching this keyboard here. Let's see here. I'm gonna pause it. There we go. And then, well, I want a little bit of reverb. I wonder how I can make that happen. What if I just... There's reverb on this thing, but I don't know if I want to put it through that reverb. I know. I'm gonna put that up. Turn that down. That's the wedge, uh, what is this, the SG Wedge SG. I like these wedges. There's something about that contour, whatever you want to call it, that uh, I like how that feels. This is the one I think I was playing on last time, last year with this guy.
pretty good. I think I'm going to have to pull the case out for this guy and bring this to my rehearsal. Just love this one. It's so great. Right, I'm going to try. What do I have here? There's still a ton of reverb on there. A ton. Maybe just a little bit less there. Uh, what's this guy? This is the Wedge H2. Wedge H2. Hello. It's not very loud. Yeah, I guess it's loud enough. Can you, can you hear me? I don't know. Nobody's there. Okay. I'm going to look at this S, G, and the H2 side by side. The H2 is deeper. Yeah. Interesting. That makes sense, like a rotary valve, you want it to respond to be a little less deep. I want to try this one, other one, see how that feels. I really like that wedge, that first one. Uh, this one has crusty lip on it from last time, it looks like. All right, a little less reverb here. <laughs> piece to me feels a little for lack of a better word tubbier feels a little tubbier this is a live show folks so uh, if you happen to be watching I welcome your comments you really have to line up that little notch in order to get it in the right spot. Back to the SG wedge. <laughs> Welcome, friends of the internet. 
We've already had 14 views on this live stream. That is pretty incredible. All right. Let's see here. Let's grab just something to read here because I'm not that clever. Hmm. Let's see. It's just stuff I don't know. And you, you all know all the excerpts and oh, I haven't practiced them in a million years. Ah, look at this. What's this? Ooh, that looks challenging. Margo me Leggero. Means that sounds challenging. It sounds like it's peeking out. Oh, it is. children why don't you
I'm going to try some other mouthpieces with this, just out of curiosity. Let's just see if any of them stand out way different. Excuse me. All right. We're trying another set of mouthpieces here. Let's go to the Those are front runners. Selzman Burger Symphony by Hauser. Number two, medium narrow. So this one has a real sharp rim. My close up here. Let's go back to the close up. And that's a sleeping dog. Close up here. Let me get a good view of that guy. Gonna focus. Come on, GH5, the greatest focusing camera of all time. That's really the worst, but there it goes. Oh, I move it around too much. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. This one is sharp compared to that last one I was playing on. I'll focus in on those guys. Look at the difference. Move them right next to each other somehow. There we go. Ah. Look at that. Look at the bore on that guy. The bore difference. Huge. You wonder, makes you wonder. What, 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 what? I used to play this on this horn, and I liked it. Let's see. Let's see what that does. Put my headphones back on, it's more professional. I'll tell you right away that this Salesman Burger Symphony number two narrow, medium narrow, is not a good mouthpiece for this horn. For me. Certainly not. Give it a shot. Uh, this one is an Allen Bear Giddings and Webster MM6. Bear. 
It's the Alan Bear double C that he likes to play, I guess, with his six quarter tuba. I don't know. Let's try that one. Now that one's great on this horn. I don't know if I've ever even tried it on this one, but so far, I like that a lot. going to be shallower. Still like the SG wedge. I think that that's back to the SG wedge. Uh, line it up right. You guys work on these excerpts, you remember them for life, right? Not me, not me. So what do we have in here? We have, what is that? Another Seldenberger one? That's probably the solo one though. What is that? Symphony. Number two, medium, narrow. Why do I have two of these? Or did I just? <laughs> What's this one then? Hauser Mouthpiece Works. Number two. Medium narrow. I must have loved this guy. Symphony. Is it the same exact mouthpiece? Alright, so now you're. Oh, I think I know. Number two, medium narrow. I think one of them has a detachable rim and the other one doesn't. How stupid. Don't know. I got two. They look identical. Interesting. I should sell one. Why do I need to? This one. I got this one from these dudes that make monster oil. The Lube Master Super G Tuba Mouthpiece. I think I like it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Still like the wedge better, but this one's got potential. Yeah. Yeah, the Lube Master. If you're just, just tuning in here, I'm just oiling horns and playing around with mouthpieces. Nothing too exciting. But I'm enjoying it, so, and I'm live. Let me think, do I have other mouth? I do have other ones that I could try. Uh, do I even want to mess with the other horns when this just fine-tuned, perfect machine, you know? I think I'm gonna go with this horn for my rehearsal tomorrow. I just don't know how I would, you know, go go to a different instrument. This horn plays in tune. And, ah, and I could just really play low stuff great, which is, you know, kind of, that was always my specialty. Is, uh, Tommy Johnson, my teacher, it was his specialty too. We kind of got along that way. We were, we were big, low, big dudes that played really low notes. Oh yeah, lots of oil and water coming out of there. That's good. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. You know, you get what you get here. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It's all the same. And it's all here. But you get what you get. I'm feeling pretty good about this live stream so far. I've had like three people tune in, which is exciting. And somebody's watching it right now. Hey, you who were watching it, hit the like button. So I can at least know that you exist. Oh, you might not be signed into YouTube. And they probably don't let you hit the like button if you're not signed in. So don't hit the like button. Don't hit the like. Come on, do it. Do it, buddy. It's just for me. I'm here. In the reverb wonderland. Left. And then I... Everyone's leaving. Oh, wait, I've got two viewers. Yes. People are back. You're back. Back in the house. This camera doesn't like to focus on my face when I'm holding a tuba. It almost wants to focus on the tuba more. Why is that? Why is it that it wants to do that? Can you guys hear me okay? Am I coming in live, loud and clear? Not too much phasing or weird stuff going on? Can you see me? Is this out of sight? We used to say that in the 70s, like early 80s. That's out of sight. It's out of sight, man. Do you remember that? 
I remember out of sight. What does that mean? It means you can't see it. But it's like, that's so cool and weird. It's out of sight. Yeah. Yeah. How long have I been on tonight? For a while. Over an hour. Over an hour. We have gone over the hour mark. Unbelievable. I've made very little progress. But we've oiled up the horn. That was the major promise of the night. Is it still focused on my face? I don't know. I don't know. Thing never wants to focus. It just doesn't want to focus right. This one's a manual focus, so I can just kind of sit in this one. And this one's better because I can actually look at the chat and just hope that you will interact with me on the chat. Um, you get a wider view of my tuba anyway, too. So, there. Well, welcome. This is a chat. We're here to talk. I'm here to talk to you. You're here to talk to me. Swap ideas. Yeah. Figure out the mysteries of the universe together we can do that too we can uh, talk about your favorite food talk about why you're scared to be alive from day to day if you are talk about why or what would help you to not be scared of life from day to day when you see these news headlines unbelievable I I'm thankful that I'm alive every day and I hope and pray my kids can have a long successful life uh, but these days are not very promising for uh, uh, for this world to at least go on like it is if that makes any sense some things have to happen and we've just for so many years we've lived such a luxurious life in America uh, without having to face serious things. Uh, but now people do. They face serious things. Now getting into the nitty gritty of nothing music or even tuba related when no one would want to hear it anyway. So I think I will start to wind this one down for tonight. Uh, but we have decided that we're going to play this lovely Miraphone Bruckner monster five quarters. It's not really a monster tuba, but uh, uh, there's some things about it that I just absolutely love. And when it comes to a do-it-all, play-easy horn, this is just always my go-to of all the horns I've ever had. This tube is the best. There's a hound dog down there. I don't know if you can see her, but she kind of came down here. You see this? There's a dog. There's a dog here. I don't know if they can see you, but you're a nice dog. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm in here, she thinks that I'm talking to her. But I'm trying to talk to you, the internet, tuba, YouTube world. You. And that camera focuses on my tube, but look at that. It has face detection. If I, well, if I lean in, it'll see my face. There we go. No? Not so great. Gets confused when I bring the tuba in front of it, for whatever reason. I know it has a very good focus engine, but it's a little quirky when you get something else in front of it. Yeah. This has been my show tonight. I'm not even going to go out with music tonight because uh, I'm tired. I want to go downstairs and get a drink. So, uh, hey, I'll tell you guys this. If anyone's watched it all the way to the end of this video, um, even if it's my family watching it someday down the line, uh, I love you. I set this up to talk to people. I hope more people come and talk to me next time I do it. And I hope to have more time to come here and do stuff like this and to do it better, because why not? And to do it live. Um, 
I produce too much video that's not live from day to day and week to week. So at least for my channel and my show, I think it's got to be live because I just don't think I have the the drive at this point to do produced videos like some of the ones I've done in the past that people like. Um, but maybe I'll change my mind on that. But for now, it's just not that important. But I do like coming and talking to you. So thanks for watching. Hit a like. The best advice I could give to anyone is to open up your Bible and read something from it and try to figure out why it says that. That's as much as I'll preach about that, but it's the best book, so I will, you know, tell you to go check it out. And, uh, yeah, come back next time. Hit a no notification bell so that next time you can come and say hi to me on my show. That's about it. Love you all. Love God. Love your neighbor. And uh, 